You're watching the world change on OTN, the Obscure Truth Network, with your host, Sam Dodson. Today I'm joining you from the family farm. Every tree that you see behind you is firmly rooted in soil that my family has owned and maintained over the last 135 years. Life out here hasn't changed as much as it has in some of the major cities because there simply is not a large bureaucracy of government interference in people's daily lives. With a complete lack of government building codes, you'll find very nice houses that are well maintained and landscaped right next door to, uh, well, not so nice houses. Because you never know when this crap strewn about the yard along with a big dump truck may come in handy. Now, obviously, people have different values and beliefs, and occasionally, those are going to come into conflict. Government tells us that they have to be the ones to solve the problems, that they can tell everyone good from bad, right from wrong, by writing down words on paper, known as laws, and then forcing everyone else to follow them. Take just a moment to reflect on your experience of life. Have you learned the most from someone else telling you what to do? or when you were allowed to make your own mistakes, suffer the consequences, and create your own solution. It's through this process that we learn from our mistakes, emerging stronger and more capable of solving problems. On the other hand, government's approach is the equivalent of me writing down some words on paper that say, Hamburger the cow, you must remain in the shot. For your own safety, of course. And if she doesn't? Well, then I have to force her, because what good would my laws be if they're not backed up by the threat of force or actual violence only when I determine it's necessary for the good of the herd, of course. Politicians would look at this and say, clearly we need to hire more bureaucrats to chase cows. And the cow chasers would eventually say, let me tell you something, boy, we're going to need us some cattle prize that'll work from 20 feet away so that we can round up these here strays, you know what I mean? Wait a minute, they already have those, don't they? Now, had I been wise enough to throw out some feed, the cow likely would have tolerated my presence in exchange for tasty food. Mmm. Selfishness is truly a virtue. This is a part of the country where life hasn't changed much over the last hundred years. On this hillside is where my great-great-grandfather built his first house and barn, which was large enough to turn a carriage team around inside. Unfortunately, in the 1930s, a lantern was knocked over, which caused the property to burn down. Now, fortunately, a neighbor just over the hill allowed him, as well as all 11 children, to move into a chicken coop where they lived until they could rebuild the White House that you see on the top of the hill. Now, they lived in that house without doors and windows for over a year, simply because they didn't have the money to buy them. This was a time before they had things like food stamps and social security. Unfortunately, government has monopolized most aspects of daily life, leaving you powerless to choose an alternative to government. They circle overhead like vultures swooping in to pick off the smaller, weaker members of the herd, claiming that the sacrifice of a few is necessary for the safety of the herd. So what's the answer? How do we get away from such a large, overbearing, intrusive government? Sounds like a fairy tale. When I talk about eliminating government services and allowing the private market to take over in many of these instances, people often come up with objections like, well, what about the, the parks and the schools? How would these things be paid for? Businesses only care about money, right? Now, if you look behind me, you'll see a row of 125 foot pine trees. That's what we grow down here on the family farm. And what you'll notice is that there's a section in the middle here that the trees are still standing. And that's because my aunt didn't want to do away with all of the trees on the farm at one time. See, people left up to their own devices will make choices that they believe are right for them. And it's not always going to be the financial incentive that is the motivating factor for everybody. Allowing choice allows diversity where otherwise there may be none. And when you begin to understand why government doesn't work, congratulations, you've just strayed too far from the herd. <laughs> With gunshots going off in the background and my family members putting up houses left and right without any sort of code restrictions or any government bureaucrats coming in and inspecting things and making sure it's up to their standards, Somehow, we've managed to get along just fine. I'm Sam I Am. Thank you for watching the Obscured Truth Network. 
Shortly after filming this video, I packed up all my possessions, uprooted my life, and left behind the farm, friends, family, and loved ones in order to turn the page on a new chapter of my life here in New Hampshire. My life in Texas was filled with good times and bad times, fun times and sad times. To all those who remain behind, thank you for the wonderful experience. What are you doing? Ah, you're getting me. Goodbye, Texas. Y'all come back real soon now, you hear?